That means you, that means you stay to the end of the service to see me. Amen? Amen. He didn't make no plan to go nowhere. He said, I'm looking at the paper. He didn't make no plan to go nowhere. He said, I want to sit pastor today and give him a hug. That's so nice. God is good. Life trusting faith that subdued. We've been on a topic called life trusting faith that subdued kingdom. But right now we're dealing with life faith that subdued, which brings things into order, into control. Amen. Doesn't that picture look wonderful? Including the one on the right hand side, Amen. better known as Cool Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, but I have to let it be known by the world that I love my wife That's and she looks right. beautiful. Amen. 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 Listen, you got, you got to affirm that which God gave you. Amen. Instead of affirming something God did not give you, you turn to get. You know? Hey, they say pastors are known to be um, roosters. Always looking at another hand out there. I'm keeping an eye on my own hand. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 All my anger with the hatch. They're not the house yet, but they hatch. That's all right. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. I don't know when they're going to leave, but it's all right. It's all good. All good. All good. <laughs> all good. Don't throw away nothing, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. Now you got a little laughter out of jitters out now, right? Amen. Uh, welcome everybody to our church, Church of Divine Relations Family Worship Center, our family and friends day. Amen. Amen. And then I hope that you enjoy a wonderful service. And uh, I hope you, if you don't know Jesus, you'll come to know him. Amen. That's the key of all this anyway, is for you to know him. Truthfully, that's what it is about. For you to know Christ is and have a better life. Amen? Amen. All right. Life, trusting faith that's subdued. Look at your partner and say, life, trusting faith that's subdued. Life, trusting faith that's subdued. I'm going to need you today. I'm going to need you today. Help me fight. Help me fight. With faith. To subdue the works of Satan. To subdue the works of Satan. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You realize you just prophesied. Amen. Amen. Are you ready, my brother? Yes, sir. We will be looking at uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of, dark, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Life trusting faith. Somebody says life. Life trusting, trusting faith. Faith. That's subdued. That's subdued. So this type of faith is life. You have to live it. Amen? Amen. You can't think it. You can't imagine it. You have to truly live it. It is a living faith that will help us not to have a high and great thoughts about ourselves. We are always thinking about ourselves, amen? amen? And nobody else. Amen. amen? We're always thinking about ourselves. Today, we're going to think about what Jesus wants us to do. How he wants us to live. How he wants us to fight. How he wants us to deal with the devil. This is Ephesians chapter 6, dealing when Paul is talking concerning the weapon of our warfare is not carnal. Amen. He's dealing also with the different things that we have to deal with with the enemy. Amen. So we have to learn how to deal with the devil according to the scripture. Not according to our feelings, our emotion, but according to the scripture. Because the devil only understands scripture. He could kill us about your feelings or your emotion. Because he could kill us about that anyhow. That don't mean nothing to him. What means more to him is the scripture. Do you know it? That means if you know it, you know him. You know Jesus. Amen? 
I want you to look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, my brother. Read that one more time. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16 says, yes, sir. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. It says, above what? Above what? All. all. Above all. Amen? Above means mean to most important. It's the most chief important thing that you need to consider before anything else anything else consider what he's saying take the shield of faith faith is a shield and if we don't take it we can be defeated he's telling you this is not a weapon but a position of defense where he said take it to defend yourself See, what Christians are not doing right now, they are not defending themselves. They are allowing the devil to sweet talk to them in their own way of thinking. It's all right. Nothing wrong. It's okay. You can't do that. God is not mad with you. He knows you're weak. You know, you know, you know, you, I'm weak. Uh, you know, I, 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 I got a desire to, to do the bad things and I can't help myself. Hello? Amen. Hello? Amen. Are we still out there? Yes. Huh? Yeah. Is that is that where we live? Huh? See, because see what? He said above all. Which means he said if you consider this this defense above all, you'll be able to defend against what the devil want to influence you with. The devil is an influencer. And we so easily get influenced by the devil. Why? Because we don't really have this mindset to live for Christ. So our life faith is not built up. It's pretty small. Chiquito. Small. Small. You see, if you want to have a big life faith, you have to have a relationship with him. Amen. Which means that relationship needs to grow every single day. In your thinking. Amen. At your job. In your house. When nobody's around. Integrity grows. Integrity grows when no one is around. Amen. If you want to do what is right, do when no one is around. See, we like to do things when people are around so we can get credit for it. Yes, yeah. Amen? Do things when no one is around. Amen. Do that which is right when no one is around. That's right. And you know, you, know, you know the strange thing about this? Even in your thoughts, do think things that's right. Amen. See, you know, because nobody's around, nobody can hear our thoughts. Mm -hmm. So we think evil things, and we think desirable things, and we think things of, of, of things of adultery and fornication and all that stuff, and, 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 and lusting and all that stuff, and thinking nobody knows about it. Integrity is even in your thoughts when you think and how you think. For the scripture says, I know your thoughts and I know they're far off. Yeah. So God knows how we think and how we feel about things because how we think we're going to act. Yes, sir, right? If you have a lustful thought, you're going to begin to do what? Lust. So don't give me this knowledge saying that you cannot think Jeez. that, you know, God is not going to hear what you're saying. He hears everything you're saying. Next door neighbor may not, but God knows. Amen. 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 Let's, let's be real. Let's be real. See, above all, above all, after all this, somebody said, after all this, after it implied that something is true even though there are obstacles or opposing conditions. See, the devil will bring all sorts of obstacles your way. Yes, sir. He will throw all sorts of things your way. He will set ignorance in your path to derail you from this faith. He said, we said we know Christ. But he said, you only could know me through faith. They that come to me must believe that I am. Yes, yes. That I what? Am. That I am the rewarder of them who what? But you only could come through faith. Yes, sir. Not assuming that because my grandma is in church. Not assuming because my dad is a pastor. Yes, sir. 
that I can understand this, what has been said just now. You have to have an experience. Amen. 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 You have to have a genuine, bona fide experience to say, I believe Christ. And he said, they are diligent. What? You have to diligently seek him. Which means you got to go after him. Yes. 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 Which means that is the chief thing. What well, we just got to talk about. Above all things. Above any type of man that come your way. Yes, sir. Any type of woman that come your way. Yes, sir. Any type of vehicle, house, jobs, anything. He's above everything. Matter of fact, the Sakshamai said, Love the Lord thy God with all my soul. Deuteronomy chapter 6. With all my heart and all my soul. Love, that's the first commandment. Right? Yes, sir. If we don't seek him above all, then we violate the first commandment. I didn't want to do the rest of it. Right? He said, don't commit adultery, we're going to do it. Don't lie, we're going to do it. Because yes, you, you didn't do the first one. So since you didn't do the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth, you're going to be disobedient to parents. Right? Amen. Because you didn't do the first one. Right? So if you've done the first one, then every one of those commandments you are able to, to do. Because you obey the first one is to love the Lord thy God. And whatever you love, you want to violate. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. You don't want to become an obstacle. You don't want to be, you want to be a, a opposition to that which you love. Nobody's in opposition to what to that which they love is what they hate. Correct? So if I love you, then I want to oppose you. Oh my God. Right? So if I love the Lord first, then why would I oppose his commandment for my life? And stop getting something by, you know, I don't need to hit, listen to that preacher. No, you need to listen to the preacher, you need to listen to the word. <laughs> preacher don't mean nothing. It's the word. It's the word. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, God love me. I ain't going to hell. The Bible, the Bible said they that transmits going to hell. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible said. They give you the criteria who going to hell and when going to hell. It's right there. People don't want to read it because see, they, they're faced with their issues. He said, the mirror never lie. Mm -hmm. We the one that lie when we look in the mirror. Yes, yes. Right? Mirror, mirror, on the wall. Uh, who is the fairest of them all? I'll be surprised the mirror said not you. I wonder what you'll do. Huh? Amen? Amen. Some people want to leave the house, they need to look in the mirror two, three, four, five times. Oh, yeah. Not checking out their dress, but checking their attitude. Mm. Mm. That's real. <laughs> check the attitude. You see, you see, the outside we check good, yes. but the inside need checking yes. and, yes. and, and, and checking over. Yes. See, you go, you like you say, you can put a lipstick on a pig instead of a pig. I know you're right. You can dress him up all you want, he's still what a pig. Until that pig changes attitude, and he's a different type of pig. He's a nice pig. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. So we need to realize that. That when you look in the mirror, it's a reflection. That's all it is. Reflecting you. Now, do you like you? <laughs> then you want to expect people to like you. If you don't like you, you expect me now to. This one is somewhere else. That's what we're talking about niceness and you know, all that stuff. Hallelujah. <laughs> In spite, what, 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 after all me, in spite of what the devil will bring to you. Amen? Amen. In spite of it. Someone said, in spite of what the devil will bring. You know, it doesn't matter what he would try to do. God is first. Yes, he, is. he is first. Above all, he said, taking the what? The shield of faith. You know what it says? Yes. Taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield, someone said, taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. Oh my God, that's to protect you, man. Amen. It represents a high place in a battle against you and the devil. The shield of faith represents a high place where it's a position you are taking against the devil to stop them from deceiving you, from put, flooding you with thoughts. You see, the devil is an illegal intruder in your faith world. Amen? And in the computer world, he's a virus. Right? See, see, the Lord was dealing with me a couple of days ago about this. He said, 
The mask is a superficial thing we wear to protect us from viruses, correct? Yes. According to what? Yes, sir. It's a superficial thing. But he said to me, what about the mass of your heart? What can protect your heart from the inner virus? My God. See, the outward virus, the mass protect. But the inward virus, who is protecting that? And I said, Lord, what's going on here? He said, look at them. They're doing this, but their heart is filthy and wicked and they won't serve me. And he said to me, what they are saying to me is that I'm seeking for life preservation, but not life renewal. Oh, no. oh. See, because it's the heart that men believe it. See, what Satan did, he trick people, say, close your mouth, but your heart is mine. Because, see, your heart is where, I, where I'm dealing with. I'm not dealing with the outside stuff. I let you fear that. But I'm dealing with the inside stuff. I want to keep you polluted and diluted. And trusting in me. My God, my God. Trusting in God. That's what Satan want to do. I said, Lord. He said, yeah. That's what they are doing. They are masquerading themselves. Not knowing that inside is bitter. I've seen people driving recklessly and, 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 and dis disregard to other people and wearing a mask. <laughs> what about your attitude? <laughs> Fine, you're protecting your outward, but what about your heart? What is going on with that issue? Why are we not mindful of the fear of the Lord? Most of the fear of something that yeah, it may take you out, but what about your heart? Amen. See, we're not considering the thing that's in our heart. That's the problem. Yes, like I said, it may take me out. Okay, fine. But when I'm leaving, I'm leaving with Jesus. Amen. How, yes. how, I heard somebody said to me, well, this bishop and that bishop died. I don't care how he died. When he died, his heart better be right. Yes, Amen. Are you telling me this? What are you trying to say? Inflicting fear on me to make me think something else? No. Yes. Fine. He died. Okay. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> he also said to me, see, the problem is, son, this is the problem. Death is not an issue. It's dying. People don't like dying because of agony. Yeah. Death is something we're familiar with. Because we go to grave sites and we see family members who have passed away. It's the dying. He said, the heart of man is dying without me. Every day they're in agony. Seeking for refuge and seeking for release, but not come to me for it. Jesus said, I am meek and holy. I will give you rest. Come on to me, who are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. How be that protector? How be that covering? You see, one thing about the Passover, the reason there was Passover, because it was a promise, but the heart of the evil was still wicked. But God saw fit to deliver his people. Amen? Amen. Because they turned on Moses, didn't they? Yes, did. Scripture said they turned on Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses was trying to help him, yes, and they turned on him. Oh, my God. Now let's get real. The blood was passed over to help the, the dead end of the Passover. But one thing they still had was a wicked heart. A rebellious heart. You could see it when it was wandering in the in the land for 40 years. And God was mad with them because they never were satisfied. They never dealt with the spirit of gluttony. They never dealt with the spirit of envy. They never dealt with the spirit of lying, adultery, fornication, all this stuff that the nation before them was cast out of the land they was going to. They still had that in them. Even though they was under bondage in Egypt, they still, you see, one thing you can put a man under bondage, but you can't put his heart into a place where you can captivate his heart and let him do whatever he want to do. He's going to do whatever he want to do anyway. Your heart is wicked and deceitful. I don't care if you're under bondage in Egypt. I don't care where you're at. If your heart ain't right, you ain't, you ain't going to be right. Only Jesus could fix that heart. Only Jesus could bring reconciliation to the heart that is sick. See, the Lord wants us to understand that this faith... Uh, it's very important to us. It's life living faith. 
Amen? It's very important. Above all things is to take this shield of faith. Cover your heart. See, the shield is to protect our head, our body. But it's also to protect our heart. When you're in a fight, the shield is held like this. See, the devil will send fiery darts. Those are arrows with, with fire on it to penetrate. And they used to dip their, um, the shield in a solution where it, would, it won't penetrate. Or you dip it in water, it won't penetrate. Amen? But nonetheless, after a while, that flame will bring that shield into a, a position of compromise where it, it will be weakened. It will compromise the texture. So that means you have to live with a character that will constantly building up that shield. So when an arrow comes, it will not penetrate. What you're saying is the arrow will penetrate your mind. If you build up the shield to protect your mind, then the devil will influence you in doing things you have no business doing. Amen. Amen? Amen? It will not cause you to manip be manipulated by his devices. Many Christians are shipwrecked because of the, 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 the many devices that the enemy throw at us. Why? Because we didn't, sort of, we, we didn't get ourselves into a place where we now spend time with God. The fear of the Lord is no longer there. People don't worship God like they're supposed to. People don't take time. The job is more important. The oh, husband yes. is more important. The, anyway, the boyfriend is more important. <laughs> the girlfriend is more important. Yes, sir, Everybody's more important. The dog is more important. <laughs> you know when Jesus comes into the picture? When the dog gets sick? Yeah. When your boyfriend gets sick? I don't like saying that word, but I use it because people are doing it. Girlfriend gets sick? Husband gets sick? Amen? Amen. Right? And that's when Jesus comes into the picture. And then when he don't heal, you don't get mad with him. Or your grandmother died. Because you pray, 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 pray. You never prayed before in your life, but you pray then when grandma dying. I say you expect God to do something because you pray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people are mad with God because grandma died. Yes, yes. Well, they need to recognize that they're going to die too. Amen. At least grandma went with Jesus. What about you? Amen. Grandma is happy. If grandma could wake up and tell you, stop praying for me, son. Get your life right. I'm all right. Don't pray for me anymore. Amen? See, we need to understand these things. This is the reality about Christianity. Not this fancy talking and all this stuff some of them be doing. They'll talk to you, they'll, they'll talk to you, you take money out of your pocket. You feel good about yourself. So you'll give and give because you know you preach good. He gave a message that was, you know, it warm my heart. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're in the wrong place. I ain't gonna want Amen. Hard. Amen. I, I, what I want to do is your heart to be convicted and, and accept Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what I want. I want the realness of the vinegar. Amen. I don't want the honey. Amen. Give me the honey when I get to heaven. I want the vinegar. Amen. Get the vinegar gonna keep me on the run. Run, run. Run, run. Run, run. Guess you know back there, right? Your old friend the raccoon, the devil. He's back there. He's coming. Amen? And we can't look back. Amen? Because Jesus said anybody that look back ain't fit for the kingdom. Isn't that what he said? If you look back, you ain't fit for the kingdom. See, we see, see, we always looking back at the, the past. We always looking back at the past. We never look towards the We always looking back what I used to be. Jesus said, I call you to be a warrior. I call you to be a servant. I call you to be humble before. I call you to be holy. I call you to be righteous. Why are we not attaining to those characteristics in our lives? But yet we want the things of the world. Why is Christian wanting the things of the world? Guess what? When you want the things of the world, you'll have the same fear of the world. I don't walk in the fear of the world. I walk in the fear of God. I don't care about what this world would do. I care about what God will do. Amen? And this world is mean nothing to me. God is more important to me. 
Amen. Since I got saved out of the street of New York, this is what is more important to me. God is. All this other stuff is illusion and nonsense to me. I don't care what it is. With a car, a house, it's irrelevant to me. My thing is my relationship with God. That's the first thing I ever try to establish anywhere, even with my own wife. My relationship with God is more important than even my relationship with my wife. Amen. Because if that is not right, then that ain't going to be right. Amen. Amen. So, you know, many, many people are playing this game online and, yeah. and saying all these other stuff. You know, it's, 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 today Christianity is over. <laughs> what you are living right now is a fantasy Christianity. Others in Wonderland. Others still yet there. And some of these people are there trying to find a way out. Today they got GPS. I don't know if she realized that. Just Google it and she get out. Get an Uber. <laughs> Amen? 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 So we have to realize as young, old, and upcoming, <laughs> upcoming that this faith that we are trusting Jesus in, we need to hold on to it and let it be a life practicing forever behavior. This life trusting faith should be as the world will see it, as I see it, and I hope the world will understand it, that we need Jesus for this life trusting faith. Hold on to Jesus. Don't let nobody take you away from it. And if you don't know Christ, turn towards him. Turn to him because he's the only one that can help you. He said, if you are my disciple and you love me, then obey my commandment. That's what he said. So if we're going to be his disciple, then we've got to obey his commandment. We have to trust him. Trust is a problem with people. It is. It is. And a lot of us are here being wrecked because of trust. Yes, yes. And you know why? Can we put our trust in the wrong person? Oh, we put our trust in fake people. Amen. Yes. Anytime you say, I love you, that means you put your trust. The word love is trust. You know that, right? Amen. That means I trust you to do what is right. Yeah. Okay? You're asking a crook to. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? You're asking a crook. But God is good. All and his mercy endure it forever. forever. To all my people who even on YouTube right now, Jesus Christ is the only way. We're not here to show up or to show out. We are here to send the actual message that Jesus Christ is simple and easy. Just live it. If you live it and be honest with yourself, then you will know that Jesus Christ is real. He's looking for honesty. He's looking for people who are going to live for him no matter what it takes, no matter what it is, no matter what the opposition. The devil is afraid of opposition that trusts Jesus. Amen. If you live real, he's afraid of the realness. He's not going to tell you that, but it's the truth. If you live a real life, the devil is afraid of you because he knows that you are an opposer to him and you're an adversary to him. And he don't like you to know that. And I pray that one day you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And that many can be healed even from this message. In Jesus' name, we pray. Even the blind, the sick, the lame, the, the ones that are afraid, I pray that the Lord God will begin to bless and strengthen each and every one in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.